everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. City elections were held on Tuesday for the office of the mayor and members of the City Council. Mayor Sly James was re-elected for his second term, and nine new members will join returning members of the council. The mayor and City Council members start their four-year terms on August 1st. Summer is here. Be sure to beat the heat by remembering these heat safety tips for you and your pet. Do not use a fan as your primary source of cooling. If you don't have air conditioning, you should go to a public building, such as a community center, every day for several hours. Be sure to check on neighbors, friends, and relatives at least twice a day. Never leave children, pets, or others alone inside closed vehicles. The temperature inside a car can exceed 140 degrees and can kill someone within minutes. If you do have to work in the heat, take frequent breaks and rest in the shade while drinking plenty of water. Be sure your pet has plenty of water and shade if they are outside and preferably keep them inside. Also, for more information, just go to kcmo.gov and search heat. Hot summer weather often leads to ozone alerts. Ground level ozone is pollution created by emissions from vehicles, lawnmowers, and power plants, and it's especially dangerous to people who have respiratory problems. During ozone alert days, you should limit outdoor activity and postpone lawn mowing or putting gas in your car. You can also help clean the air by carpooling or taking the bus. On ozone alert days, the KCATA offers discounted bus fares of only 75 cents. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. July is usually one of the hottest months and things are heating up as we get ready to host the thousands of visitors who are on their way to downtown KC. The countdown is on as the National Council of La Raza's 38th Annual Conference heads to the Kansas City Convention Center from July 11th through July 14th. In addition, all attendees and the Kansas City community are invited to visit the National Latino Family Expo, one of the largest free events in the country focused on resources and activities for the whole family with more than 100 exhibitors showcasing their products and services. From live entertainment and giveaways to health screenings and informative demonstrations, everyone will discover something new in a fun and exciting environment. Zapata, a multi-million dollar family company started in Lenexa, Kansas, will hold its 2015 National Conference July 17th and 18th. Zapata will be welcoming 2,600 sales representatives, most of them from outside of the Kansas City area, to their home base to learn the latest about the company and to see the new jewelry and fashion line. This event is expected to pump $5 million into the Kansas City economy. Don't just sit there. Get up, get out, and get ready to move with superstar siblings Julianne and Derek Huff in Move, live on tour at the Music Hall on July 27th. They'll be burning up the stage with their dancing, singing, and sibling rivalry as seen on ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Also at the Music Hall, don't miss the hottest jazz event of the year, a night of jazz featuring Dave Cause with special guest Rick Braun, and Kenny Lattimore on Friday, August 7th. Cause, a nine-time Grammy nominee saxophonist, has played with such legendary artists like Ray Charles, Natalie Cole, Celine Dion, and Rod Stewart. A mission for both of these events is available through Ticketmaster or at the Municipal Auditorium Box Office. To learn more about upcoming events at the KC Convention Center, please visit kcconvention.com or call 816-513-5000. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests. I am Deborah Schultz, and I have the honor of serving as president for the Missouri-Korean War Veterans Memorial, which as you all know, stands right behind us here. Countermarch! March! Color! Halt! Breathe! Set! Color!
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Deborah. I appreciate the introduction and uh, thank you for uh, attending this morning and uh, welcome to Washington Square Park and uh, Missouri Korean War Memorial. Uh, it was a great day when uh, Deborah came forward with her brother Jim, who's with us today. At, and of course, they were doing this in honor of their father, Jim, uh, whose lifelong dream was to build this memorial here in Washington Square Park. And we've been proud of it very much ever since. And now, the American Legion Band will perform the medley of armed forces. Please stand to recognize your branch of service. You know, I was asked to focus my attention in my remarks today on our national flag and what it means to me. And I like to do a little bit of research, you know, before I put my thoughts together. And I, in doing that research about our flag, do you know that it has been modified 26 times since 1777? Didn't know that. Of course, I know they were adding stars, but there were other, other modifications. In my opinion, the beauty of its symbolism is that each one of us can form our own opinion of what our flag's significance and meaning is without a government or another individual dictating to us what we think. The flag that is to be retired today is being brought to us by the American or by the uh, flag retirement team for the Missouri Korean War Veterans Memorial. This is a very special flag. You'll notice the difference right off when you see the number of stars. This flag was presented to one of the members of our flag team when his brother died in training maneuvers during World War II. This was the first time the flag was used for the Alonzo family for First Lieutenant Cruz Alonzo during, in World War II. Four more members of that family have laid, been laid to rest under this flag. Sergeant Frank Alonzo in World War II Specialist First Class, Louis Alonzo from Korea and Vietnam. Staff Sergeant, Jose Alonzo from Korea. And Enrique Alonzo, the Korean conflict and, or excuse me, the Cuban conflict and Vietnam. This is the bunting that was on that flag. I asked that we not retire. This is part of the flag. This is family legacy. And this is, of course, to be returned to the family. With support of the American Legion Post 189, the Missouri Korean War, War Veterans Memorial Flag Retirement Team will retire the Alonzo Family Service Flag.
Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples, Chief Fire Marshal for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. The 4th of July is a time for fun, family, and picnics, but the use and discharge of fireworks in the city limits is prohibited. Kansas City Fire Department responds to numerous fires and injury calls each year due to the use of fireworks. Nationwide, more than 15,000 reported fires were started by fireworks and 8,000 fireworks related injuries were treated in U.S. hospital emergency rooms. There are also more fires on the typical 4th of July than any other day of the year. So remember, leave the fireworks to the professionals so you can enjoy your family and picnics and not have a visit from us. Thanks. Have a safe day. Oh, hey, I didn't mean to drop in on you, but now that I have you, let me and my friends teach you a thing or two about water conservation. You know, water is one of our most important resources. Even though the Earth is about 70% water, only 1% of it is accessible fresh water. That means my friends and I are more rare than you might think. We gotta do all we can to keep ourselves safe. I could tell you more stats about us, but I think it's better if I just show you what I mean. Let's go! Whoop! Here in the bathroom, a lot of us water drops sure get wasted. If you want to do all you can, install a new water conserving toilet. A new water conserving toilet uses half as much water as a conventional one and works just as well. Whoop. If you can't get a low flow toilet, try putting a large filled plastic bottle in the tank. It forces the toilet to use less water when it flushes. The bathtub is where the most water is wasted. Try using the shower instead. Did you know an older shower head uses about five gallons of water per minute? That's just money going literally right down the drain. A new shower head uses half as much water and still gets you squeaky clean. In my house, we use water conserving shower heads and no lollygagging while you're in there. Shorter showers save both water and energy. So save the daydreaming for the breakfast table. Phew. There are a lot of little things that you can do around the house to help me out. Did you know that washing dishes by hand can take up to four times as much water as a dishwasher? That's way too much. The average dishwasher takes six gallons and Energy Star washers take only four. So fill those washers full and don't waste any of us drops. And when you do laundry, make sure it's a full load or select the proper water level. Many new washers have settings to help you use less water. So use them. Whoop. When you need a drink, stay away from those plastic bottles of water. It takes 36 ounces of me to just make one plastic bottle. And sometimes the water inside is just tap water. Can you believe that? Oops. And don't forget about outside. I could use your help out here too. Lawn care can be more than half of your yearly water use. That's just too much. Water in the early morning or at night to avoid evaporation. That's just money disappearing into thin air. And I'd really like it if you'd get a rain barrel. The rain in the barrel can be used later to water plants, saving drops and money on your water bill. And drip irrigation is another good way to conserve water while watering plants. Whoop. If you just do some of the little things, it will make a huge difference. And my friends and I can stay around a little longer. Without smart water management, we could all be in real trouble. But with your help, everything will be right as rain. Get in touch with some of these folks to learn more. Join us at the upcoming National Latino Family Expo at Bartle Hall, July 11th through the 13th. The city will have staff on hand to provide helpful information about various city services. You can also talk with recruiters from the Human Resources, Police and Fire Departments about how to apply for various city jobs. The Family Expo is free and open to the public during the National Council of La Raza's National Conference. Visit nclr.org for more information. Organizations interested in applying for fiscal year 2015 through 16 grants from the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund are required to attend upcoming informational workshops. Workshops take place on Tuesday, July 7th from 3 to 5.30 p.m. at the Kaufman Foundation, which is 4801 Rock Hill Road, and Wednesday, July 8th from 9.30 in the morning to noon at the Old Northeast Library, which is at 6000 Wilson Road. Application packets will be available at these workshops. For more information, go to kcmo.gov and search NTDF. 
Don't forget that fireworks are illegal within city limits. Please stay safe and enjoy a fireworks show at one of the many community events. City Hall and other city offices will be closed on Friday, July 3rd in observance of the Independence Day holiday. However, trash pickup will run its regular schedule on that day. The following week, July 6th through 10th, is Trash Amnesty Week when residents are allowed to place up to 14 bags at the curb. To view this program again or other Channel 2 video productions, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. I'm Chris Hernandez with the Weekly Report. Stay cool this summer and have a great 4th of July.